Shabbat Shalom, YouTube, my Hebrews, and my Shalomi homies. We're in Numbers 26. Um, this is going to be one of those chapters that if you don't like the way Bear pronounces Hebrew, you're going to need some earplugs. I'm three sips deep on coffee today. It has been raining here for, we're on our third day of rain. And I'm tired, and I'm very much so looking forward to this Sabbath of rest. So, in Numbers 25, we see the end of the story of Balaam and Balak and then Phineas, and the zeal of Phineas, and he runs through this guy and his girlfriend with a spear, and the guy and his girlfriend, um, the guy was a man of Israel, and the woman was a Midianite woman, Zimri's son of Salu, the leader of his father's house among the Shimonites, the Simonites, and the name of the Midianite woman was Cosby, daughter of Sir. This, these were important people. And a plague had gone out. And the plague was stopped <clears throat> because of the zeal of Phineas. Because the father's chosen people were being corrupted by outside influence. Imagine that. Numbers 26. And it came to be after the plague that Yahweh spoke to Moshe and said, Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, oh, spoke to Moshe and Eliezer, son of Aaron, the priest. Yeah, because Aaron's gone. We've got a changing of the guard here. Take a census of all the congregation of the children of Israel from 20 years old and above by their father's houses, everyone going out to the army in Israel. Okay. Remember how numbers started. Excuse the slurping, but there's going to be more of it. Coffee's hot and wonderful. The book of numbers started with take a census. Right here, <laughs> numbers one. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe in the wilderness of Sinai in the tenth of appointment on the first day of the second new moon in the second year after they come out of the land of Mitzrayim, saying, Take a census of all the congregation of the children of Israel by their clans, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names, every male, head by head. From twenty years old and above, everyone going out to the army in Israel. Number them by their divisions, you and Aaron. Okay, well... Aaron's no longer here. Aaron has passed. But we see, after this census, that the total number is 603,550 men. Now, we're going to get here to the end of the numbers. But that was at the beginning of this journey through the wilderness. Remember the father made them wander in the wilderness for how many years? For 40 years. For every day of their disbelief when they would not go into the promised land, he had them wander in the wilderness for one year. 40 days, 40 years. And 40, biblically, the book Divine Numerics by Dr. Michael McGee, fascinating book. Not a ringing endorsement, but man, a fascinating book. Um, 40 is a number of trial and tribulation. Every time you see it in the Bible, whether it's the Israelites denying the promised land 40 days and then walking in the wilderness 40 years, or Moshe up on Mount Sinai receiving the law for 40 days from the Most High and the messenger of the Lord, which is Yeshua, to Yeshua's own 40 days in the wilderness being tempted by Hasatan, uh, 40, right? And so these guys were out in the wilderness for 40 years. 
I'll show you here at the end. But the Israelites that we have here in this census are not the Israelites that we had in the first census. And that was by design because Yah had those people wander the wilderness for 40 years so that they could die off. Because they rejected the promised land. Because they rejected the blessing that the Father had given them. He had them wander in the wilderness for 40 years so that that generation could die off. He said that he would not punish the children of that generation. That he would let them in, but that that generation would wither and die. Guess what? When Yah says something, he means it. All right. Numbers 2 6. Take a census of all the congregation of the children of Israel from 20 years old and above by their father's houses, everyone going out in the army to Israel. So Moshe and Eliezer, who's his nephew, because he's Aaron's son and Aaron was his brother. Eliezer the priest spoke with them in the desert plains of Moab by the Jordan of Jericho, saying, Take a census of the people from twenty years old and above, as Yahweh commanded Moshe, and the children of Israel who came out of the land of Mitzrayim. And Reuben Firstborn of Israel, son of Reuben, of Hanak, of the clan of the Hanakites, of Palu, the clan of the Paulites, and the Paluites, and Hetzron, the clan of the Hetzronites, of Carmi, and the clan of the Carmites. These are the clans of the Reubenites, and their registered ones were 43,730. And the son Palu, Eliab, and the sons of Eliab, Nemuel, and Dathan, and Abiram. This Dathan and Abiram were the called ones of the congregation who contended against Moshe and against Aaron in the company of Korah when they contended against Yahweh. So this is um, Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, or Abiram, or it was probably Aviram, because the B is a V in Hebrew and yada yada, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and so... Um, these guys are no longer. We know that Dathan and Aviram are, they've been smoke checked by the Most High. Uh, yeah, it didn't go well for Korah either. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah when that company died, when the fire consumed 250 men and they became a sign. They did become a sign. Remember that they took the brass uh, or the bronze censers that they were, their fire holders that they were offering uh, at the tent of appointment and they beat them into plates and they hung those plates on the altar to make it clear that there was one person who had an anointing and it was Aaron, it was Aaron the high priest, not Korah, Dathan, and Aviram. And um, you can read all about that in, in and around Numbers 15, the rebellion of Korah, which we have touched on. Here we've read, I mean, touched on, we've read the entirety of it. So if you're, if you're new here and you're interested, you can go back in this playlist and uh, read all about that. But basically, they contended against Moses and Aaron, saying that, hey, you guys are not the guys. We're the guys, and we're tired of you guys being the guys and telling us what to do. And the father made it clear who it was who were the guys. Okay. But the sons of Korah did not die. The sons of Simon, according to their clans, of Nemuel, the clan of the Nemuelites, of Yamin, the clan of the Yaminites, and the Yakin, the clan of the Yakinites, of Zerah, the clan of the Zarites, of Shaul, or Saul, Saul, the clan of the Saulites. These are the clans of the Shemanites, 22,200. Interesting. Sons of Gad, according to their clans, of Sephon, the clan of the Sephonites, of Haggai, the clan of the Haggites, of Shuni, the clan of the Shunites, of Ozni, the clan of the, the Osrians. No, the Ozites. They're, everybody's an ite, like an Israelite, the Oznite, the Erite, of Arod, the clan of the Arodites. They are good at baseball, those guys. Everybody in the Hebrew um, slow pitch softball league is like, you got to watch out for those A Rodites because they'll just dominate. They're doing so, it's 
actually induced a whole bunch of corruption in the Hebrew slow pitch softball league. Like people were corking bats, buying off umpires, uh, spitting on home home base. It was just crazy. These guys, they were good. They were really good. Of Arod, the clan of the Arodites, of Areli, the clan of the Arelites, these are the clans of the sons of Gad, according to their registry, 40,500. The sons of Yehuda of Judah, Er, Er, Er. Next child I have, I'm just naming Er. Hey, what's your name? Er. <laughs> no, really, kid, learn to talk. Er. Are you okay? Er. Oh, all right. <laughs> Back slowly away from the weird child. No, really. My dad's a jerk and named me Ur. And Ur, then Onan, died in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Judah, according to their clans of Selah, the clan of the Selenites, of Peretz, the clan of the, the Partsites, of Zerah, the clan of the Zerites, and the sons of Peretz, of Hetzron, the clan of the Hetzronites, of Hamul, the clan of the Hamulites, these are the clans of Yehuda, according to their registered ones, 76,500. Pretty good-sized clan right there. The sons of Issachar, according to their clans, of Tola, the clan of the Tolites of Pauva. Puva. Puva. Pauva. That's how you say that. Pauva. The clan of the Punites. <laughs> The Pooh Knights. I'm just wondering what their battle standard looked like. A white flag with a brown steaming pile of... <laughs> Charge! Sorry. Of Yashub, the clan of the Yashubites, of Shamron, Shamona, the clan of the Shamonites. These are the clans of Issachar, according to their registered ones, 64,300. Sons of Zebulun, according to their clans, of Sered, the clans of the Sardites, of Elon, the clan of the electric cars, of Yalael, the clan of the Yalites, these are the clans of the Zebulonites, according to their registered ones, 65,000, 60,500. The sons of Joseph, according to their clans, by Manasseh and Ephraim, because remember, we've got Manasseh and Ephraim underneath Joseph. Um, it was a whole thing. We read all about it before. The sons of Manasseh of Machir, the clan of the Machirites, and Machir brought forth Gilead, and Gilead the clan of the Gileadites. And these are the sons of Gilead of Iazer, the clan of the Iazerites, of Helek, the clan of the Helekites. Of Azriel, the clan of the Azraelites. That's a cool name, Azriel. I believe I read in a book somewhere that Azriel was the name of a one of the watchers, the fallen angels in Genesis six four. I could be mistaken. Different spelling. That was A Z R I E L, and this is A S R I E L. The clan of the Azraelites of Shechem, the clan of the Shechemites of Shemida, the clan of the Shemidaites of Hefer, the clan of the Heferites. Who'd have thought? It should just say of Hefer and his clan, of Shemida and his clan. And the Salafadad, Salofrad, Salofrad. Son of Hefer had no sons but daughters, and the names of the daughters of Salofchad were Mala, and Noah, and Hogla, and Milka, and Tirza. And the clans of Manasseh and the registered ones, 52,700. These are the sons of Ephraim, according to their clans, to the Shudola, the clan of the Sahutalites of Becker, the clan of the Becherites. Of Tahan, the clan of the Tahanites, and these are the sons of Shetu, la 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 la, of Iran, the clans of the Iranites, and these are the clans of the sons of Ephraim, according to their registered ones, 32,500. These are the sons of Joseph, according to their clans, the sons of Binyamin, according to their clans, of Bela, the clan of the Belites, of Ashbel, the clan of the Ashbelites, 
of Achiram, the clan of the Ach Achiramites, the Shafufam, the clan of the Shafufamites, of Hufam, the clan of the Hufamites, and sons of Bela were Ard, Ard, Ard. Have you met my friend Ur? I'm Ur. He's Ard. Not to be confused with Ur, which is where Abraham was from. But he was Abram at the time, and then he became Abraham because he was given the law by Melchizedek. Not to get confused with Yeshua, who is the high priest in Melchizedek, the order of. But you see, actually, that Melchizedek was Yeshua, and we know all of this because my name is Ard, and his name is Ur. Don't get it mixed up. Could you imagine... I think it's funny. I, mean, I really do think it's funny. And it's it's probably borderline blasphemous on my part to some, but it's like, Hebrew's the chosen language? It's like, oh, it's so soothing to my ears. <laughs> I just think heavenly thoughts every time I hear. And then I said. I'm like, oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> Got it. I asked my buddy Ard about it. And the sons of Bela were Ard. And Naman, of Ard, the clan of the Aramites, Ardites, and of Naman, the clan of the Namites. And these are the sons of Benjamin, according to their clans. And their registered ones, 45,600. These are the sons of Dan, according to their clans, of Shucham, the clan of the Shuchamites. These are the clans of Dan, according to all their clans. All the clans of the Shumites, according to the registered ones, 64,400. Wow, Shuha was getting after it. Sons of Asher, according to their clans. Yimna, the clan of the Yimnahites of Yishvi, the clan of the Yishvites of Beria, the clan of the Beriaites of the sons of Beria of Haber, the clan of the Haberites, and Malkiel, the clan of the Malkielites. And the name of the daughter of Asher was Sarah. These are the clans of the sons of Asher, according to their registered ones, 53,400. The sons of Naphtali, according to their clans, Yatzael, the clan of the Yatzelites, and of Guni, the clan of the, <laughs> the Gunites. Gunis. Oh man, I'm just thinking about sloth and a pirate ship in a cave right now. Sorry. Major distraction. Of Yetzer, the clan of the Yetzerites, of Shalem, the clan of the Shalemites. These are the clans of Naphtali, according to their clans, and the registered ones, 45,400. These are the registered ones of the children of Israel, 601,730. So 603,550 went into the desert 40 years later. 601,730 are coming out. And Yahweh, thank you for bearing with me with all the T interprets Hebrew terribly portion of the show. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe saying, The land is to be divided to these as an inheritance according to the number of names. To the large one you give a larger inheritance, and to the small one you give a smaller inheritance. Each shall be given its inheritance according to their registered ones. But the land is divided by lot. They inherit according to the names of the tribes of their fathers. According to the lot, their inheritance is divided between the larger and the smaller. So by lot, they're basically going to draw straw, straws for which tribe gets what area of land. And then within that area of land, larger sections of land will be given to larger clans and smaller sections will be given to smaller clans. Why? Well, A, it's eminently fair. And B, it's extremely logical. Um, they are, in a certain sense, maintaining a consistent population density throughout the land. That's great from a preparedness standpoint. It's great from an agricultural standpoint. And large groups of people make better targets, don't they? Just thinking out loud here. According to the lot of their inheritance is divided between the larger and the smaller. And these are the registered ones of the Levites, according to their clans. Of Gershon, 
the clan of the Gershonites, of Kahath, the clan of the Kahathites, of Merari, the clan of the Merarites. These are the clans of the Levites, the clans of the Libnites, the clan of the Hebronites, the clans of the Maalites, the clan of the Mushites, the clan of the Korites, and Kahath brought forth Amram. And the name of Amram's wife was Yochabed, the daughter of Levi, who was born to Levi and Mitzrayim. And to Amram she bore Aaron and Moshe and their sister Miriam. And Aaron was born, and to Aaron were born Nadab and Abihu, Eliezer and Ethamar. Remember, yeah, it tells us right here, Nadab and Abihu died when they brought strange fire before Yahweh. And that was what, Leviticus 16? Question mark? Um, maybe it was Leviticus 10. It could have been Leviticus 10. I think it was Leviticus 10. Yep, Leviticus 10. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, Aaron, each took his fire holder and put fire in it and put incense on it and brought strange fire before Yahweh, which he had not commanded them. Now, strange fire can be interpreted many different ways, but basically they brought, we believe, um, we meaning myself and several of my brethren. And if it really mattered, we'd have the details right here. What matters is that they messed up, but the details on how they messed up it seems like that there was some incense that was dedicated to another mighty one, lowercase g, God, and they brought that to Yahweh. And fire came out from Yahweh and consumed them, and they died before Yahweh. They were also drunk. This is what Yahweh spoke, saying, By those who come near, let me be set apart. And then, mm -mm, don't bring me. And this is a great teaching. You don't bring Yah something set aside for another God. Christmas. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Easter. Oh, geez, my bad. And before all the people, let me be esteemed. And Aaron was silent. You think his sons just got smoke checked. Um, and then here in 10.9, do not, and Yahweh spoke to Aaron saying, do not drink wine or strong drink, you nor your sons with you, when you go into the tent of appointment, lest you die a law forever throughout your generations. There's no drunkenness in service to Yahweh. Um, we know also that these pagan worship rituals, a lot of it did and still does revolve around the imbibing of alcohol as well as other um, chemically altering substances to get you in the right mind frame to worship. And it's like, yeah, but my brother Brooks could get on the piano and start singing and alter my mindset like that, right? We can worship without chemicals and seek the face of the Father. And then from this chemical-induced, you know, worshipful mindset, what do we get? the things that were told in the book of Acts that the Gentiles should abstain from. Strangulation, blood, idolatry, and whoring. God knows what he's doing. Like, he really does. And, and it, there's threads throughout this word. I was talking about this with somebody. I believe his name was Fingernail. that you can start in the first chapter of the first book and end in the last chapter of the last book and tug threads and just watch words jump off the page throughout the entirety of this word. Yah knows what he's doing. Okay. So Aaron lost his sons. And Aaron, and to Aaron, this is now Numbers 2660, and to Aaron were born Nadab and Abihu, Eliezer and Ethamar. And Nadab and Abihu died when they brought strange fire before Yahweh. And their registered ones were 23,000, every male from a new moon. And I think that's precisely the number they had um, in the beginning, if 
I was high speed, I would have checked this and you would have known. We would have known for sure. Uh, no. The registered ones were 7,500. Oh, wait a minute. That's just for Gershona. Twenty two thousand. They had twenty two thousand oh, out of twenty three thousand. Increased by a thousand. Nice. Every male from new moon old and above. For they were not registered among the other children of Israel because there was no inheritance given to them among the children of Israel, which we talked about, which is uh, why a portion of the offering that was brought to the tent of appointment, the tabernacle, was for the priest and the priesthood. Um because they were dependent upon that income to keep them going. And we've touched on that quite a bit. These are the ones registered by Moshe and Eliezer the priest who registered the sons of Israel in the desert plains of Moab, where the Jeeps come from, by the Jordan of Jericho. But among these, there was not a man of those registered by Moshe and Aaron the priest when they registered the sons of Israel in the wilderness of Sinai, so, of the 603,000, remember this, for Yahweh had said to them, they shall certainly die in the wilderness, and not a man was left of them except Caleb, son of Yafune, and Yehoshua, Joshua, son of Nun. Okay. These two guys were the two, two of the 12 spies that were sent into the promised land by Moshe, who came back with a good report. They were the only two that did not reject the promised land. They were the only two that are still living of the 603,550 military age males that the father brought into 40 years of basically tribulation to kill him off in the wilderness. Two of that original generation made it in. <clears throat> we can see, though, that Israel has, and I mean, during this time, Israel's run won military victories. During this time, they've basically maintained their numbers. You know, we had 601,750, something like that, total military age males, but the priesthood increased by 1,000, so we're basically... We're within a thousand head of the same number of people. That's incredible. So the father did not diminish them or decrease them. He just rolled over from one generation to the next. Remember, even Yeshua, when the Pharisees come to him, they say, Hey, hey, bro, um, what shall we do? Um, do some signs for us. Work some wonders, miracle man. And he's like, you know, it is a wicked and adulterous generation that seeks after a sign. When he said that, he was referring to this generation. He was calling the Pharisees the people who rejected the promised land. Why? Because the promised land was standing right in front of them. They're like, do something special. Messiah guy, and he's like, you don't get it. You're literally rejecting the promised land to my face right now. You are a wicked and adulterous generation, and he's drawing a direct parallel between those that rejected him in his day and these, this generation, they rejected the promised land in Moses' day. Moses, Moshe, was the original archetype Yeshua then became the embodiment play Ra'u of the Torah and the prophets and became the archetype for us now. Um, he act and Yeshua actually made it more difficult to keep Torah. I get a lot of people say, man, you're under the bondage of the law. I'm like, have you read your Bible? Under the bondage of the law, it's not, I just don't murder people. I'm good. Under Yeshua... I can't even call you an idiot with hate in my heart because now I've murdered you with my words. 
So when Yeshua tells the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you are a wicked and adulterous generation, he's making a direct parallel to this generation that died off in the wilderness, that was killed off in the wilderness because they rejected the promised land. And as we know, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the high priests and the scribes, they did reject the promised land in Yeshua Messiah. So just wanted to point that out again. We'll do 2-7, and then that'll do it for the book of Numbers this week. And then, because, uh, yeah, there's still a bunch more here before we get into Deuteronomy, the second telling. Numbers 2-7. Oh, finished the chapter. Got to hydrate. Excellent shirt. Then came the daughters of Salophabadadabadachabadadadadadadad, the sons of Hefer, the sons of Gilead, son of Makir, son of Manasseh, from the clans of Manasseh, son of Joseph. So there's their lineage in a nutshell. And these were the names of his daughters, Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tirza. And they stood before Moshe and before Eliezer the priest, and before the leaders and all the con of all the congregation, by the doorway of the tent of appointment, saying, Our father died in the wilderness, yet he was not in the company of those who were met together against, Ye against Yahweh, in the company of Korah. But he died in his own sin, and he had no sons. They're saying, look, our dad wasn't perfect. He died in his own sin. But he certainly is not one of these people that died with Korah. So they're like, what's up with our inheritance? Because he had no sons, but he certainly had, what, five daughters? One, two, three, four, five. He had five daughters. Is there not a portion for us? Because, yeah, he might not have been perfect, but he was not involved with this rebellion. Um, and he had no sons to pass on. 27.4. Why should the name of our father be removed from among his clan because he had no son? Give us a possession among the brothers of our father. Moshe then brought their case before Yahweh, and Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Now, I would say, well, that means that Moshe prayed over it. But they had this entire, you know, elaborate, elaborately built tabernacle that was constructed specifically so that Yah would dwell within their midst so that Moshe and Eliezer now could go talk to him and say, hey, Father, we got an issue. What do you think about this? And he go, here's what we're going to do. And by the way, write this down so we can tell the children of Israel, okay? Yes, sir. Got it. Can you imagine? I mean, so many times in our modern Christian walk, we're like, I wish the Father would just talk to me. And it's like, have you, <laughs> could you imagine and be like, hey, yeah, can I get an appointment for next Tuesday at 10 a.m.? I need to talk with you. Sure thing. Let me check my calendar. Yep, we can do it. Not a problem. <sighs> Moshe then brought their case before Yahweh. Literally. In our case, it would be fasting, prayer, beseeching the Father's face, consulting his word, and I would say lifting songs of praise and letting him plow the fields of your heart so that he could plant his seed there, and talking daily, constantly, all day with the Father so that you get good at hearing his voice. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, The daughters of Salofrachad speak what is right. You should certainly give them a possession of inheritance among their father's brothers and cause the inheritance of their father to pass to them. And speak to the children of Israel, saying, When a man dies and has no son, then you shall cause his inheritance to pass to his daughter. And if he has no daughter, then you shall give his inheritance to his brothers. And if he has no brothers, then you shall give his inheritance to his father's brothers. And if his father has no brothers, then you shall give his inheritance to the nearest relative in his clan and he shall possess it. And it shall be to the children of Israel a law of right ruling as Yahweh commanded Moshe. And Yahweh said to Moshe, Go up to the mount of Aviram and see the land which I have given to the children of Israel. It's about to get real, y'all. And Yahweh said to Moshe, Go up into this mount Aviram and see the land which I have given to the children of Israel. And when you have seen it, 
you also shall be gathered to your people as Aaron, your brother, was gathered. After you've seen it, after you've seen the land, Moshe, you're going to die. You will be gathered to your people. I love that phrase, gathered to your people. Because while I have people here and I love them, I have people there. And I am... I don't want to sound morbid, but there's a part of me that's looking forward to seeing my people again. I'm not eager to go, but I'm not unwilling either. I have friends and family and children there waiting for me. And when you have seen it, you also shall be gathered to your people, as Aaron your brother was gathered, because you rebelled against my mouth in the wilderness of sin, in the strife of the congregation, to set me apart at the waters before their eyes. These were the waters of Meribah at Kadesh in the wilderness of sin. Remember, Miriam had just died, and there was no water. And Yah said, speak, he said, take Aaron's rod to show them this budding olive branch, which is a sign of peace, right? Take this, show it to the congregation of the children of Israel and speak to this rock here and water will flow forth for the children of Israel. And Moshe said, roger that. And he went and he took that he popped that rock twice and I get it I get it if I had three to five million people uh, either hanging on my every word or constantly trying to be in rebellion and I was leading them through the desert where they were dying off because of their transgression and I had just lost somebody close to me and there was no water, I don't know if I would have had the patience to speak to that rock. Well, because of that, and the sin here is yes, Moshe did not do what Yah told him to do, but he said, shall we, Moshe and Aaron, bring forth this water? He robbed the glory from Yah so Yah says, And Moshe spoke to Yahweh, saying, Let Yahweh, the Elohim of the spirits of all flesh, appoint a man over the congregation who goes out before them. If you ever wonder, what would a good leader be? Who goes out before them and comes in before them? Who leads them out and brings them in so that the congregation of Yahweh be not like sheep without a shepherd? And Yahweh said to Moshe, Take Yehoshua, Joshua, son of Nun, which is the same name as Yeshua, which means salvation in Hebrew. Salvation, be saved. A man in whom is the spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, you shall lay your hands on him and shall set him before Eliezer the priest and before all the congregation and give him command before their eyes and shall put some of your esteem upon him so that not all yet, and we will see why, and put some of your esteem upon him so that all the congregation of the children of Israel obey him. And he is to stand before Eliezer the priest, who shall inquire before Yahweh for him by the right ruling of the Urim, the, the Umar, Urim and the Tumim and the, and the stones that we are not entirely sure what they are for, but they adorned the high priest's outfit. Uh, and there is reference of this made to in Mormonism. But outside of that, in this holy word, um, they're rarely mentioned 
And when they are, it's for the high priest. I don't even want to say divining. Wisdom and discernment, we'll call it that. And we only know that contextually because there's no operator's manual on what these things are and what they did. At his word they go out, and at his word they come in, both he and all the children of Israel with him, all the congregation. And Moshe did as Yahweh commanded him, and took Yehoshua, and set him before Eleazar the priest, and before all the congregation, and laid his hands on him, and commissioned him, as Yahweh commanded by the hand of Moshe. As Yahweh commanded by the hand of Moshe. So, the Father did not destroy the nation of Israel. He just swapped out one generation for the next because of their rejection and lack of obedience. There's a big teachable moment in there for us. Israel was not destroyed. But the Israelites who rejected the Father missed out on the opportunity to be blessed because they would not do what the Father told them to do. We see here that Yah's chosen, Moshe, who has an anointing, even the mighty Moshe, everything is but for a time. Everything is tick. Tick, 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 tick. And Moshe is passing his commission, his ordination <coughs> from him to Yehoshua, to Joshua. Ecclesiastes 3, for everything there is a season. And Moshe's season of life is coming to an end. We'll have him for the rest of this book and the next. And we will have his words in perpetuity. As long as we guard this word, there's a reason we have so many Bibles around here. And I'm probably just going to start stashing them. Because I think there will be a famine for the word in end times. And I'm not saying we're going into end times, but if we do, I don't want to get caught with my pants around my ankles. I want to be ready. I want to have access to the Father's word whenever we need it for right ruling. And the archetype, Moshe, is fading. And the next leader of the children of Israel will be Yahushua, Joshua, whose name means salvation, who will lead the children of Israel into the promised land. He who has the exact same name as Messiah, Yahushua, Yeshua. It's like Jim or Jimmy. Same name. Means salvation. You know, this is a survival prepping for normal people shirt for my brother Kyle. And he, much like our brother the NWA prepper, closes his videos by saying, so I want to ask you, what have you done today to get ready? And that makes me mindful of asking you and me. What have we done today to get closer to the Father's will? Because it's Yah's will be done. The Israelites are going to the promised land, baby. You're either part of that generation or you're not. Shalom.